Hi all, Kraken Latte here. Welcome to the Kraken Latte Spreadsheets. This is a tutorial of my new document center for all sheets containing information. Written guides, zone data, the character roster everyone's been vying for, and this will be added to over time. This is a live document that will be added to and you can access at any time once I put the link up for you. So, we are on the welcome page here and I am joined by the actual writer of this, because she was so kind to do it for me, my co-host Gilded Canary. Say hi, Canary. Hi, Canary. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, Canary, if you would take us through a little tutorial, a little intro on your welcome page here that you put together for everyone. Absolutely. So, you know, as Kraken said, several of you have caught glimpses of our shared character tracker through various videos and have also requested the written leveling guides. So we are here to provide you with both. In this spreadsheet, you will find a blank character tracker as well as written step-by-step -step walkthroughs for our leveling guides. Along with these walkthroughs, we will have this video detailing how to use the spreadsheet. You can see here a sample of our spreadsheet in use. So note that the color coding is automated on this spreadsheet. You will not need to change any of that. The colors for professions are the only thing on here that don't have automated color coding. So if you want that color coding, you will have to do it manually. Something else you will note is that you can't edit this. No editing. How do I use this? That's very simple. You go up to where it says file and you simply make a copy for yourself. Once you have done that, it'll say copy of Kraken Latte spreadsheets. At that time, you have your own copy of the spreadsheet and can edit it accordingly. Yes, so I will take it from there, Canary. Thank you so much. All right, so we're gonna jump right into this with the official page here, the example that you saw of the character roster. I like the black background, but the base, of course, is white. All you have to do is uh, change the background. But anyways, so we're going to go through the character roster. This is the most complex thing of the sheets here because this was the most requested thing right next to the written guides. So we're going to go through each column so you know what they're for, so you know how to use this for yourself. So starting with column A, we have account number because you can have up to eight accounts on a single battle net account. And if you don't have more than one account, that's absolutely fine. This is just so you can keep track of them if you do, because if you have more than 50 characters, believe me, uh, this will start getting confusing. In the faction column, which is uh, column B, this is exactly as it says. We have A for Alliance, which will automatically turn blue, and H for Horde, which will automatically turn red. You simply just type in the letters for that and you're golden. Next column is for levels. That way you know what level your character is. So for 60s, since this is the current highest level as of this video, those turn gold. That way they stand out from the rest of the crowd. Any level 50 plus, as that is a current next best range for old content farming, I like to have this other color here. That way I can visually recognize what characters are good for that. And then anyone lower than that, so 49 and below, are just the base background color. They do not change. So you can put in whatever you want for there and you will know that the uncolored ones need to be leveled. The next column here, column D, is the name column. And I highly recommend that you put in the exact spelling, special characters and all, for your characters. That way you know exactly who they are if you need to reference them in any fashion. Here we have an example, Canary through an Anduin for us, who is a human. Jumping to the next column is the race column in column E. Canary was so kind to put in a really cool drop down list that contains all of the currently available playable races. As things are updated and added to, to the game, we will add them here. So whenever we can play Naga in the future, those will be here as well. Next, we have the gender column. Currently available in the game is male and female. There is no non-binary or trans or anything like that in the game. So this is not for RP. This is physically what your character is in the game as referenced by Blizzard. So we have male and female. 
You can change that to whatever you want. Jumping over to the next column, we have classes. We have all 12 classes available for you here, also in a beautiful drop-down. And you'll notice that they are not only numbered, but organized by armor type. That way, it is easy to see groups lumped together, so... The next two columns are Profession 1 and Profession 2. This is your two main professions. Now, we have Blacksmithing and Mining as our example. Both of these have the same drop-down lists. And as you will see, we have also included the specialization options for alchemy and engineering. And if you don't want the special engineering one, we have regular engineering as well. We don't have one for alchemy, but it's not entirely necessary because I don't like having more than three alchemists. However, we have a blank engineering because I like putting engineering on my alts, as you saw here in the welcome screen. A lot of the uh, my alts have engineering. That is simply so they can get around easier. The uh, engineering toys are quite wonderful. So that is those two professions, and if you want to denote who like is your main enchanter, your main alchemist, and all that, simply change the color to whatever you want. I like putting them as any sort of gold, because it makes them stand out amidst the background of whatever color you chose. So, jumping to the next three columns, we have our three secondary professions. These are formatted so that you can simply put an X in them and that denotes that character has that. We also have the special M option, at least we did, that will be updated <laughs> in this one. That way we know who is the main for the cooking, fishing, and archaeology. So when the M turns gold, that's what it'll be defaulted to when we fix it here, that means that character is the main. So jumping on to the more topical stuff, all these other super colored columns, these are expansion specific things. Right now we are currently in Shadowlands as of making this tutorial. So we have Covenants, 9.0 Campaigns, Corthia, and we will add a Xerath Mortis column as well. We have not done that yet, but you will see that when you copy the sheets. So for Covenant, we actually have five options in our drop down list because your character may be doing all of them, or only one of them. So you choose your covenant so you know who they're bound to, or you can hit all. For example, I am doing all four covenants on just four different characters so that I can collect everything instead of doing 16. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't think too hard. So <laughs> all you have to do in these columns here for like 9.0 and Corthia, and as well as any other where you see an X, you just put an X in, and they have access to it. I like to put it in there when they have access to it, but if you want to use it so you know when they've completed the whole thing, you can use it that way too. Totally your call. Now for the garrison, and as well as the artifacts from Legion over here, and the BFA footholds, you'll notice we have a 3 out of 3 number here. What this means is if I type 2 out of 3, it does not turn green. Garrison has three ranks. Artifacts, there's three of them, and don't worry, um, you can change that according to your class, because Demon Hunter has two and Druid has four. And then the footholds, there are three footholds to unlock. So that way, when you do three out of three for your garrison, it will automatically turn green. At least it's supposed to. It hasn't turned green yet on mine, but it could be just laggy. My internet's been a little off today. So, that pretty much covers this whole section on all of the expansion specific stuff. If you want to add your own column, you simply right click on any of them, insert column right. It will contain, it will keep the same formatting like the X is here. So bam, there's another X. And then you can type whatever you want in that column so you can start tracking stuff on your characters. You'll notice here I also have uh, places like Vajir, Twilight Highlands, Molten Front, so I know who has access to those because they are zones that need to be unlocked. AQ40, I will explain real quick. The tier sets for Encourage Raid 40, you have to have really high rep for. Um, and I don't want to grind that across multiple alts, so I have this column so I know who is going to be designated for that. 
The same goes for A skins, which is artifact skins in Legion. If you want to collect all of the artifact skins for all of your classes, that is very long and complex. So I have designated a class per character. <laughs> that way I know who's done that. <laughs> same with the fishing artifact. The fishing artifact I think is a pain to obtain and to level, so I know who has that there. So that's pretty much the character roster. Um, it won't look completely like this when you likely see it next because we're gonna add things over time. So it depends on when you're looking at this in the future. Things will be added to this and reorganized, so you're welcome to copy it at any time. So jumping from the roster to the guides, these take way less explaining. Currently, as of this tutorial, we have the 150 Alliance, 1 to 50 Horde, and 50 to 60, which is faction neutral, because that is the current range. Now, in the future, when this is no longer the current leveling guide, these guides will be replaced with whatever the newest guide I have out is. And all these are, are simply written versions of the guide I go through on my YouTube channel. The last one we currently have is zone data. Now, in case you're unaware what this is, I, in order to make my new 1 to 50 guides a while back, created a list, a spreadsheet. It was in Discord originally, but now it's here officially of every single zone in the game multiple times because I am crazy enough to do multiple brackets because every zone is going to give you different results based on what level you're there. So 10, 30, 40, 50 for the later zones, 60 for some of them, depending on where you're at. This sheet here specifically is going to be the most changing because if you'll notice the colored green zones with lacking data, I have not completed those yet. So if you want that specific data, you'll have to come back for that later. And I may have gotten to it by that point, because as you can see, this is going to require an entire, like, two or three more accounts filled with characters <laughs> for testing. So, but let me show you what you're looking at exactly. So we have, in column one, we have the faction that can do this zone. For example, the Alliance cannot do the Ghostlands. I mean, you can go there, but you can't quest there. Jumping down uh, from the Alliance and Horde specific, we have CA and CH. Now they're still blue and red-ish, an off blue and an off red to denote what they are. That's Contested Alliance and Contested Horde. This means that both factions can do this zone, such as Arathi Highlands, but they are going to have slightly or very different quests, even if the results are the same. I do have this marked, that way you know. Now the other difference is some zones, I have a purple N. That is because these are absolutely faction neutral, meaning, such as in the Eastern Plague Lands or like the Legion zones, there is no difference between the two factions, period. There is no lore difference, there is no visual difference, it is identical. And there are zones in the game that are like that. So, then we have the zone name, of course, and the range. These are the specific levels that I did the testing in. That way, if you want to see, you know, what you're going to get between 10 and 30 in Silver Pine Forest, you're going to know that I went from 10 to 23 in one full sitting. Oh, and I almost forgot, because for some reason I skipped over it. The level rec, level requirement column is very important. Because every zone in the game, Chromie Time or not, requires you to be a certain level before you can enter it. You have to be at least level 5, for example, before going to Silver Pine Forest. That is a requirement, no ifs, ands, or buts as of this time. So there's the range. Here's the levels, level column. It's the same as the range, but it's simply the level number. So I went from 10 to 23 in Silver Pine Forest. And in the levels column, that means I got 13 levels. And of course, you can see that I also came back and did Silver Pine Forest 30 to 38. That's eight levels. Easy peasy. Right next to it, we have minutes. That is the time in minutes it took me to complete the zone. So I did Silver Pine Forest 10 to 23. That's 13 levels in 100 minutes. 
Now you'll see a score column. What is that exactly? This simply is referring to these two columns here, the level and minutes. What this is simply is a score on how good this zone is. Specifically, I divide the minutes by the levels. So 122 divided by 11, that's 11.1, .1, and this does it automatically. Here, I have a couple hidden columns that I'll show you. I have a full clear and a patch column. And what these are is this simply denotes in the patch column what patch I did this in. This is more for my reference than for you, but it is so that I know when I did it because, for example, between 9.0 and 9.1, there were some subtle changes in certain zones. And I need to denote that on my end. And it might be helpful for you as well. And as far as the full clear column, what that simply means is if there is nothing there, it is a full clear. However, you'll notice that there's an N with brown background here. N means no, that is not a full clear. I do not do the entire zone. In my Horde leveling guide, for example, I do only part of Hillsbrad Foothills. This means that this data, 23 to 30, <clears throat> is based on that. And you'll see that I have a 20 to 31 and 23 to 30. This one is the full zone and you can see how different that data is. So hopefully that's not too confusing for you, but you can just leave these two hidden if you want. They're not required. And of course we have notes. There's not a whole lot of notes, but some of these zones are race specific. So like Tarn only, Undead only, Blood Elf only. Uh, Ghostlands has no flying. You cannot fly there ever, no matter what level you are as of now. So on and so forth. And that's pretty much that. So that's nice and easy. I have these separated by, not by expansion, I have them separated by continent. And of course, I also have the starter zones separate as well, because those are on their own sort of thing. You don't really do those at later levels. So Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor, Outland, Northrend, Pandaria, Draenor, Broken Isles, Cold Turris and Zandalar, and the Shadowlands, which you do not see the Shadowlands here currently. That is because that is the current max level. This is mostly for like lower level stuff. So that is pretty much the explanation on that. So what do you think about them apples, Canary? I am actually rather thrilled with how this came out. So yay. As am I. Thank you so much for doing this for me. This would take a lot of work. I mean, I know I did the zone data part, but you did everything else and I'm super pleased because Canary is wonderful and is going to be, in a way, my future guide <laughs> writer in terms of the online written format that you all can access. So this tutorial will go live and you will have access to the link that will let you copy it like we showed you in the beginning. So if you have any questions again, Leave it in the comments on this video or come to my Discord and ask either of us. Anyone there would likely be able to help you. So, anything else you would like to add before we close this out, Canary? Uh, no, just thank you all for your support. And there we have it. So, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, remember, it's never too latte. This is the part where I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. Doing at least one of those gets my videos recommended more. The higher these numbers are, the more YouTube likes me, and that helps me bring you more coffee-fueled content. I thank you so much for any support you choose to give.